Welcome back to Inside Ambition, a casual news show where we talk about all things Drexel. I'm your host, Alexandra George. Earlier this month, the American College Health Association, or ACHA, released a 19-page document listing points universities should consider in deciding when and how to reopen their campuses. I know what you're thinking. Only 19 pages? That's a light read. There's only 19 pages keeping us from all the wonderful things we have access to while living on Drexel's campus, like squash tournaments. Oh, how I miss those. At my house, we only have zucchini. Speaking of squash, on April 27th, President Fry sent an email to Drexel faculty and staff outlining the three possible options for the fall 2020 COVID-19 task force and how they're evaluating our return to campus. Oh, and President Fry, I knew you'd come running as soon as I started talking about your favorite vegetable. Now that I have your attention, I meant to ask. My dad is really tired of getting all of these COVID-related emails, and I'm really tired of him busting into my room to rant about them. Could you please take him off of your mailing list for the time being? And then when the virus, you know, just magically disappears, if you could have him back, that would be great. In this email, President Fry said that he looks forward to receiving the task force's recommendations for how the university should operate in the fall by early June, but other schools have already started to announce what their fall 2020 terms are going to look like. Now, let's take an inside look. President Fry listed three possible options in his email last month, none of which is returning back to campus exactly the way things were three months ago. If any of you watching are hoping to return to normalcy anytime soon, I'm sorry to be the one to tell you that it's not going to happen. If you're looking for normalcy, it might be time to transfer to Florida State. The closest option President Fry offered to any sort of normal is that when the fall term begins, we return to campus, but with social distancing protocols in place. And right now, we have no idea what that might look like. Gloves? Probably not. Masks? Maybe. Six feet apart? For sure. And I envision that to be pretty problematic considering all the guys that I've met at Drexel that clearly have no idea what six feet looks like. And you might not either, because six feet looks like me. Six feet and two inches, actually. I can't even begin to count the number of times at Drexel that I've met someone who told me they were six foot four, and I try to explain to them that that can't be possible because I can see clearly over their head. What would social distancing look like in a college setting? What would dorm life turn into? Would single rooms be the only option? That sounds pretty sweet, pun intended. What about Greek life? Would there be a strict size limit on their social gatherings? Would contact tracing be put into place with apps or calculated attendance and seating charts? Are there gonna be little Mario robots following us around watching our every move? Hmm, I can't decide if that would be really scary or really cute. Ooh, maybe they could breathe fire if you stepped within someone's six foot bubble. The second option is that the campus stays closed, but we continue to operate remotely. But it seems like the university is doing everything in its power to keep that from happening. The STAR program is still planned for this summer, and there is serious talk about moving some students back to campus this next term, like RAs and research assistants. On the other hand, ACC just announced to his sophomore residents that they can apply for rent abatement for the summer term as well they will not be expected to uphold the two years of living on campus requirement. But Drexel and other universities have way more reasons to reopen in the fall than to stay closed, and almost all of them are financial. Due to COVID, colleges have lost access to major revenue pools like sports, dining, and housing, and many students have planned to take a leave of absence due to lack of course offerings or changes to their financial circumstances. Because of the coronavirus, several small colleges and universities are expected to close throughout the next year, and some already have. While that might not be the same for Drexel, finances are still an issue, but I know that might be hard to believe with the cost of tuition. But just eight years ago, Drexel's debt was amongst the highest in the country, and the amount of zeros at the end of your loan payment is nothing close to the bill John Fry was facing back then. I know there's gotta be a light at the end of this tunnel here somewhere, but 
I just can't seem to find it quite yet. The third option listed in the email was that the fall term runs as a hybrid. This could work in several different ways. It could be like the regular hybrid courses Drexel offers when you go to class once a week and then the rest of the work is done online, or it could be that some classes like production courses and labs are offered on campus and all others are virtual, or maybe it'll be optional whether or not you want to take your classes remotely or in person. To me, the hybrid option seems like the most feasible because if there was to be a virus outbreak on campus, we would easily be able to switch back to remote learning. And even though we as college students are not considered to be the most vulnerable population in this pandemic, that doesn't mean that all of us would be affected equally. Hundreds of students are immunocompromised or suppressed, and as much as they might want to return to in-person classes this fall, it might not be an option for them. The guidelines laid out by, 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 Acha. Sorry, it was right there. You would have thought they changed their acronym to something that sounded a little less like you're a carrier during a pandemic. You know, it might be A-C-H-A, but it's funnier when you say Acha. Well, the guidelines laid out by ACHA slash ACHA are pretty self-explanatory. They outline a need for tracking students with attendance and seating charts so that it's easy to trace the virus if and when it comes to campus. But don't worry. Sure, they might find out that you were at Jimmy's house until 4 a.m., but they won't need to know why. If we were all dealing with the same playing field here, this would be a lot easier. Maybe we could proceed to life as normal on our field, and those who got sick, we could just shove into the bubble at Buckley. I mean, that's what they built it for, right? But come on, that's not realistic. People are going to be returning to Drexel from all over the world, and some might have pre-existing conditions. Whatever plans are laid out, it is necessary that they accommodate everyone. If that means some of us aren't going to get the college experience we signed up for, that's okay. And if you have such a problem with it, maybe check your values and assess what you're doing with your education. <sighs> Sorry, that was harsh. The better we follow the CDC's regulations, the sooner we will all be able to return to the normal we are craving. Several universities around the nation have started to roll out their plans for fall 2020. Most of them are clear to state that these are only plans as things are changing every day and it's really hard to see that far in advance. California State University, one of the largest universities in the country, has announced that it will be operating virtually come the fall. Considering the size of their student body, it probably was the smartest move for them. And Ithaca College said that they won't be inviting students back to campus until October at the earliest. But Syracuse University and others have announced that they plan to return to in-person classes come the fall. Yes. There it is, the light at the end of the tunnel. I knew it was coming somewhere. However, they have modified their term calendar to accommodate the pandemic. Syracuse moved their term up a week and canceled fall break. This means that come Thanksgiving, students will be home for the rest of the semester until January, and that they will take all finals online. Syracuse adopted this model to try and limit traveling and keep their campus as safe as possible. They are doing their best to create a bubble around their campus to protect themselves from the virus. But Drexel is in a unique position here. Our fall term already starts later than anyone else's, so we'll have a little bit of an advantage there. But the bubble model of dealing with the pandemic is not exactly feasible for Drexel, because we are so close to so many other communities. I mean, that's part of the beauty of our school. You only have to walk a couple of feet to hop on the Market Frankfurt line to take a visit to see the boy band that lip syncs outside of Reading Terminal or to visit your best pal Gritty. Plus, so many of us live off campus in Powelton Village or other places. We can't be bringing the virus into those communities. And what about our professors? There's a lot to consider here. The university doesn't just have us to protect when it comes to the virus. So in these upcoming weeks, please make sure you're actually reading the emails Fry sends out. I know they're quite wordy. Bro, if you need an editor, hit me up. But they do have important information. Or you can just make it easy for yourself and watch our show. We'll keep you up to date with the important stuff that matters to you and not belabor about what's going on with the rest of the world. Who cares about that anyway? 
Make sure to follow our Instagram at inside underscore ambition and to subscribe to Drexel Television's YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and we'll see you soon.